Hello, governor. My name is Ray Woods, and I'm not actually British or whatever that was. Um, but I did make the iconic Princess Diana black revenge dress. <laughs> Much like Bilbo Baggins, our adventure begins in the hole in the ground known as Hobby Lobby. Just kidding, Hobby Lobby. I love you and your sweet, sweet discounts. Anyways, here you can see I'm deciding what fabric I'm going to use between the heavier one and this more see-through one. I ended up going with the heavier one and I got three yards of it for a total of 16 bucks with the 40% off discount. If you're wondering what the band-aid on my hand is for, it was because I went to the doctor earlier that day to get my ganglion cyst called Lumpy Really, He didn't want to go though because that didn't work and he's still around. While I was at Hobby Lobby, I was followed around by these kids who I can only describe as waifs. They were creepy and they stared at me the whole time. These kids were straight out of the Charles Dickens book. Like, please sir, may I have some more? Before any history nerds come after me, I do understand that the top of this dress was originally different from the silk skirt. However, I could not achieve this with my humble means of production. When I got home, I didn't know where to start, so I folded the fabric in half and sewed with a long stitch along the open side. This was a horrible idea and I wasted a ton of time, so don't do it. Then I tried pulling the thread that I had just sewn, which I told you was a horrible idea because one, it took forever, and two, it didn't work, as you will see in Wait For It. Three, two, one. No! But did I learn from this lesson? No, I definitely did this three other times thinking it would work. No matter my setbacks, I still believed I could make this work. That's not half bad, actually. Oh, naive youthful me of the past. That's very bad. The next day, I found out that I had COVID, and the day after that was my birthday. <laughs> and that is where we will resume. After wasting way too much time, I decided to redraw my design to come up with a new way to make the scrunchiness of the dress. Um, please excuse my models, they're horribly driven, dr 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 drawn, and sometimes they look like linebackers. While drawing, I remembered having seen this dress on Pinterest and thought that I could use this sort of drawstring, or as Raleigh put it, pulley system, to make the ruching in the dress. Once I knew what I was doing, I folded the fabric in half once and then twice because when you cut out the fabric, it's going to be the same for both the front and the back. Here I'm using a bodice pattern that I learned how to do from the YouTube video below. It's super easy and fast and I would highly suggest doing it. Starting with where I wanted the neckline to be, I traced this bodice pattern once and then twice. Next, all I did was connect the dots to make an elongated bodice pattern. Here you can see I measured from the hip mark on the pattern down to where I wanted the dress to be. I put in a lot of extra room for this just because I didn't want to end up with too little fabric. I then used this measurement and drew a line from the hip down to where I wanted the dress to end. You can taper this if you want, but the hip is already accounted for the widest part of the pattern. Yahtzee! I started cutting out the pattern, and if you'll notice, I'm doing something so very wrong, which I'll notice in three, uh, two, oh, one. That's right, Ray from the past. Sit there, staring into space, knowing what you've done. You didn't leave a seam allowance, you fool. Although your music taste is still impeccable. After I recovered from this humiliating mistake, which is surprisingly worse than that time that I poured pizza on water to cool it down. I turned the fabric pieces to match each other good sides in, and then pinned them so that way they would line up. I then sewed both of these pinned sides. Uh, bonus points if you do a French seam, it'll save you a lot of time. Then I tried it on for good measure. At this point, I look like I'm making a nun habit. Next, I watched Crazy Rich Asians and sewed along the side seams, making a little funnel for where I would put the drawstrings in. Side note, if anyone wants to play mahjong, let me know. Here, I tied a longer piece of ribbon from a random spool I had to a bobby pin. I use this to thread through the side seams. You're welcome to make your own tubing if you want. That's just a lot of work and I was way too lazy for that. I fed the ribbon bobby pin combination through the little side tunnels for lack of a better word. Also you can see here how the edges of the dress are fraying. This is not great because one it doesn't look good and two your dress won't last and that's why you should probably do French seams earlier on or if you're at this point like I was then I just had to do some weird folding and finagling to make sure that it wouldn't ravel. Once the ribbon breached the top, if we're using whaling and or child delivering terms, I tied it off to a bobbin. I did this so that way it wouldn't slip back into the dress. Make sure you do this on the bottom as well. You cut off the ribbon from the spool. Everest and I hopped in the truck and headed down the mountain to the lower barn to retrieve the wire. It really wasn't that big of a deal, but I made it into a big deal because above all else, I am a drama queen. 
Step one, find the wire. Uh -huh. Step two, cut the wire. Step one and a half, talk in a country accent and reference a farm movie. That'll do, pig. That'll do. Wire secured. Mission accomplished. Am I right, Snoop? Good dog. Step three, prop your camera on a turnip and get some pictures of the absolute minimal labor that you did, but feel good about doing it because you wore coveralls and a cowboy hat. Kurt Chow, that's a keeper. Step four, test the waterproofness of your boots. Oh, yikes. They're not waterproof. They're not waterproof. They're not waterproof. <laughs> I believe that's what would be classified as a maniacal laugh. It's the same amount of unsettling as how I organize my apps. You know, the old folks say just slapping some, some creek water on your face will make COVID go away, so. So it works. Doggy. Once you've retrieved your wire from your local barn, or if you don't have one, your local Home Depot, you can begin shaping the wire to either a dress form or yourself. I did both. They work great either way. Just make sure that you have the gentle curve that eventually goes into a sharper V in the middle. Next, we're going to make the sleeve so you need to measure your biceps. Feel free to flex a little bit before you do this to get a good measurement. Measuring this always reminds me of that scene in Mary Poppins with the measuring tape, but instead of practically perfect in every way, mine reads, so freaking swole, protein powder puts me in its breakfast smoothies. I then took these measurements and cut out strips of fabric about 8 inches tall by whatever I just measured the circumference of my arm to be. Please note that once again, I forgot to leave in seam allowances and the sleeves were really, really tight. Next, I shot off some machine guns while listening to banjo music because that's what you do when you live in the country. At this point, I didn't know that my sleeves were actually going to be too tight, so I decided to add some elastic just in case. I also did this wrong because I did it with a straight stitch. For future reference, definitely use a zigzag. I realize you can't really see what's going on here because it's just a massive black hole of fabric with a little bit of weird plaid. But what I'm doing is attaching the sleeves that I just made to the dress. I just kind of estimated where they should go. Might have done this differently. It worked out alright. Also, you'll see a little bit of silver on the end there. I attached a zipper sometime during this process. It's not that hard. I'm pretty self-explanatory. Just make sure that you fold the fabric so that way it fits well. I also spent a decent amount of time hand sewing the top hem by the wire to make sure that the fabric didn't slip over and to keep the edges tucked in. For the final step in this dress, I tried it on and situated the ruffles how I wanted it, and then I tied off the ribbons and sewed them to where you couldn't see them. And for your next step, haha, <laughs> just kidding, there isn't a next step, but if you want, feel free to put on your dress, walk around downtown, get stared at because it's 40 degrees outside, talk in an accent if you want, wave, the people are gonna love you. Shout out to my sister Raleigh for the really great pictures. Now he has really awkward transition. I love season four of The Crown. It might be my favorite season yet. Uh, the casting for Diana was fantastic. Josh O'Connor pulled off some amazing performances. And the costuming was immaculate. I loved it. I'm excited to see where the show goes, especially with season five and casting a whole new cast. Um, I know that they have set for Diana Elizabeth DeBecky who you might have seen in Tenet. She's the really tall woman at 6'3", which doesn't make a lot of sense to me as far as historical accuracy goes. Um, and she kind of reminds me of the folks from the rainy planet in Star Wars when Obi-Wan goes to check out the clones. So, if you're like me and you want to learn more about Princess Diana, I would highly recommend checking out the documentary Diana in Her Own Words. I think it's on Netflix and it's the story told by Diana from Secret Recordings. It's really fantastic and probably one of the best documentaries I've ever seen. I would also suggest checking out this podcast from Imagine Life. I don't want to explain it too much, but basically it just walks you through Diana's life like you're in her shoes. It's great. Well, that's enough of me nerding out, so have a nice day and tally -o. God save the Queen! <laughs>